I'm Auntie Mary, I'm a Bunjalung woman. Um, I was brought up at Tari, my dad's country, which is Biripai. I'm one of 12, I have eight sisters and four brothers. Out of the 12 of us, eight in my family have got diabetes. I'm, uh, and that's insulin dependent, as well as medication. I was a housewife, I was working, I was going to TAFE at the same time. I did not have time to sit down and take care of myself because I had all these other things and, and my work to, that was, that was more important to me because it wasn't going, I wasn't going to be affected by it. Not only did I had to force to give up my work, my paid work, I had to hand my children, my grandchildren back to their mother. It devastated me. It was like, like I died. My name is Gavin State. I'm an orientation and mobility instructor with Guide Dogs New South Wales. I first met Aunty Mary, uh, would have been about two and a half years ago. She was quite reluctant to venture out, especially by herself. I was terrified of going outside, but after listening to an ad on TV about guide dogs, that they offered cane training and not, not only just dog. And when they gave me that, op that option, I thought, oh great, I jumped on it. So then that's when my training then started. One of the big problems with mobility when, with vision loss is moving around where there's no clear paths. Um, and where Mary lived, there was lots of open spaces, so trying to help her negotiate that was it was a real challenge. One of the major issues that most people will have is that they don't understand the day-to-day -day changes and the implications of having a vision loss. It didn't just affect me, it affected my family. Because at times my eyes uh, sight was fluctuating, so there was times and given the, the light and conditions that I could see one day. And, and my grandkids say, well, how come Nanny can see today? How can she still do this? And then the next day or the next time they saw me, I deteriorated. So there, there was a lot of confusion. It's been important to work with her husband, Rodney, and also with her family as well. With guide dogs, they teach her, her and I stroll along too. And I, I, pick up, I pick up everything that they do. It was a great learning curve. But with guide dogs' help, we were able to, they were able to help the whole family to guide me, to walk me, teach me um, just simple basic safety manoeuvres. Without that support and that assistance from them, you know, I, it, it was a, a, a gradual step to where I am now, but I wouldn't have got that confidence um, without their, their assistance and, and their support through working and mobility training and, and introducing the long cane. Um, it's increased Mary's um, confidence in, in moving around and getting from place to place in, in and around Mudgee. My cane is extension of my arm, it's my eye, it tells me where I am. When I learnt that um, guide dogs can, uh, had collar canes, I thought, ah, oh, can I have mine in Aboriginal colours, you know, the red yellow and black. It makes me feel very proud. I think Mary's contact with guide dogs has been uh, a bit of a lifeline for her in terms of her independence, but also, as I say, for, for Rodney as well. Without guide dogs, I wouldn't know what to do. They are my backbone. Ring guide dogs, because they'll help you. Once they make that initial phone call, it'll be the best phone call they will have done. Hi, I'm Johnny Murison from the Kukuyanji tribe. Did you know that the Aboriginal community is six times more likely to get vision problems? 
The most common conditions are cataracts and diabetic retinopathy. Imagine if you had difficulty with simple tasks like doing the shopping, crossing a road, or moving around your community. Would you know where to get help? Guide Dogs New South Wales and ACT can support you. People like Arnie Merry and others with vision impairment, they've received help. And now they can travel confidently and independently. Join me as we look at some easy and practical skills you can use next time you meet a person who has problems with their vision. My name is Gavin State. I'm an orientation and mobility instructor with Guide Dogs New South Wales. So the great thing about Guide Dogs in the regional areas is that we do come to you. So it doesn't matter whether you're in a place like Gadooga or Engania or Wilcannia or wherever you are, we will come and we will work with you in your community. Um, we'll involve the people in your community and, and provide the support that you need to be more confident in your mobility. My name is Judy Rogers. I'm an orientation and mobility instructor. We provide a range of services and always include family or carers as well. Vision loss is caused by a range of conditions and this affects how people see. Some people get blurred or patchy vision while others have problems with their central or side vision. The level of a person's vision can change daily depending on lighting, weather conditions and their general health. By looking at someone, you can't always tell if they have trouble seeing. People with guide dogs and canes may have some limited but useful vision. And people who use long canes have them in different colours. They're not always white. There are many different eye conditions, but the most common ones are cataract, diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma and macular degeneration. These conditions are directly related to the eye. However, some people's vision is affected when the brain is damaged, for example from a stroke or head injury. Diabetic retinopathy is caused by diabetes and results in blurred, patchy and fluctuating vision. So it's important to get regular eye checks for early detection and ongoing treatment. Cataracts are usually related to ageing. It results in blurry vision, faded colours and glare sensitivity. It's important to know that often cataracts can be safely fixed. Glaucoma is caused by increased pressure in the eye that damages the nerves, but isn't related to high blood pressure. It can result in tunnel vision and at worst blindness. Often there are no symptoms, so early detection is vital. Macular degeneration is usually related to ageing. Added risk factors include smoking and diet. It affects central vision, which can impact things like reading and crossing roads. Again, early detection is vital. So the best way to treat vision loss is to have your eyes checked regularly because often there may be no signs that your vision is changing. But if you're losing some sight, help is available. My name is Pauline Wicks. Um, I'm the Regional Eye Health Coordinator for the Central West of New South Wales. Some of the most common eye conditions are diabetic, retinopathy, cataracts, glaucoma and macular degeneration. There are some simple and easy ways that you can help someone with their everyday activities. Always introduce yourself, ask the person if they need assistance and how you can help them. Hi Mary, I'm Pauline. Hi Pauline. If you're giving directions, try to be clear and precise. Always give directions from their perspective. Left means their left, not yours. Can you remind me where the bathroom is? You just need to put your hand on the counter, follow the counter along. At the end of the counter, turn left. And the bathroom is in front of you. Vague directions like, it's just over there, really doesn't cut it with those who are blind. Being vision impaired doesn't mean you can't go out and about. Everyday activities like going to a cafe can be made easier with some simple assistance. Thanks. Hi there, my name's Hello. Sam, I'll be your waiter today. Um, I've got some menus here for you. Would you like me to read the menu out for you? Um, my husband will read for me, okay. thank you. No worries. Notice how the waiter offered to read out the menu. Some people may be able to read it, whilst others may not. Okay, thank you. If you're not sure, just ask. When you bring things to the table, Tell them where each item is placed. Hi, it's Sam again. Got your order here. 
Here's your pot of tea is just on the right with the handle pointing to the right. Your cup is just in front of you on the right and a sandwich just is... You can also use the clock face method where everything on the table is related to the number positions on a clock face. Guiding is an easy and comfortable way to help a person move about safely. The person will take your arm and be able to follow you. Here are some basic tips. Ask the person if they need assistance. Make contact using the back of your hand or forearm so they know where your arm is. They will usually hold your arm just above your elbow. Walk at a comfortable pace and avoid potential hazards. We're just approaching the doorway, Mary. If you approach a narrow space like a doorway, slow down, tell them what you're doing. Move your guiding arm behind your back and the person will be able to step in line behind you. When you go through a door, tell the person which way the door will open, left or right, towards or away from you. If you're guiding a person to a chair, tell them what kind of chair it is and which way it is facing. Place your guiding hand on the back of the chair. The person will be able to find the chair and sit down. When you come to some stairs, tell the person which way they're going, up or down. Check if the person would like to use the handrail and if they need help to find it. When they're ready, begin moving one step ahead at a comfortable pace. Tell them when they've reached the top or the bottom of the stairs. And we're at the bottom. Very good. When you approach a car, find out where they'd like to sit. Tell the person which way the car is facing. Well, I'm going to step down first. Okay, just open the door for you. Open the door and place your guiding hand on top of the door. Most people will be able to get in the car on their own. Good. If you're closing the door, let them know when you're doing this. Some people might have their preferred way of being guided and it's always best to do what they feel most comfortable with. Some people may need more support like the forearm grip with your elbow bent. Another technique is they may choose to use your shoulder. These are some simple tips when helping people get around. You've just seen a range of ways that you can help someone with vision impairment. Guide Dogs New South Wales and ACT provides assistance to people with different levels of vision impairment from all walks of life and age groups to help them move about safely and confidently. Although it's their name, they're not just about guide dogs. Before you get a guide dog, you do white cane training, which teaches you mobility. And then you have the choice of if you would like to train with a guide dog. A guide dog was a natural choice for me lifestyle wise. I'm a country girl and a guide dog suits my lifestyle perfectly. When you see a guide dog in harness, it means it's working and you shouldn't pat it, feed it or distract it in any way. A guide dog is not a pet. It's helping the person to move around safely and independently. People using a guide dog in harness can legally enter all public places to the cafe, including restaurants, pubs, clubs, cafes and shops, as well as taxis, public transport and hospitals. We have a free service for all clients. Um, you don't have to be legally blind to receive our services. We're open to all ages, whether they're babies, children or elderly. And we service all areas across New South Wales. Guide Dogs New South Wales and ACT offers a range of services. And just remember, it's free. Guide Dogs are real deadly. They'll come to you wherever you live. If you have vision loss or know someone who does, contact Guide Dogs by calling or visiting the website. They're here to help.